This is my QCX40 in its enclosure. This is a short demonstration of the features of the new firmware version 1.01. .01. So to date, almost 8,500 QCX kits have been sold and there have been remarkably few problems, but um, a few minor firmware updates along the way. The last one was a bug fix in January this year. Um, there's been no major changes for at least the last two years. So in this release there's quite a few changes and uh, some of them look good with some demonstration. One of the main motivations for this was some reported problems with the iambic keying mode A. Um, so everybody has a different style of keying but some people have reported difficulties with mode A whereas mode B was said to work perfectly well. It had been quite hard to pin down the problems with the keying iambic A mode but I had a very helpful email from Dave4x1rs and Danny4x1mj and they provided several scope screenshots and analysis comparing the QCX output results against the real Curtis Kia chip and so that really really helped me to narrow down where the problems were and fix them. Another improvement to the keying was to turn off the digital signal processing during transmit which improves the responsiveness of the keyer. The digital signal processing is used to obtain another filter and get the amplitude number to use in the CW decoder and the S meter but it's not used during transmit so there's no point spending the time on it and it makes the keying more responsive. Now one of the other things I find personally useful if, if calling CQ um, or working through a list of stations that keep calling me on the band one of the things that's very useful when the stations call your frequency is to use the RIT control to get them in the centre of the 200 Hz passband. If you don't do that, um, they quickly fall outside the 200 Hz passband. So it would be very useful to be able to make this adjustment at the same time while operating. In the current firmware until now, when you're operating with an adjustment of RIT, you can't actually key the transmitter. So I've changed that now so that in this version 1.01 .01, you can leave RIT on with adjustment here on the display and you can operate the transmitter at the same time. So that's a very useful feature. The other thing similar in a similar vein is the speed setting for the Kia. Um, again, you used to be able to adjust this with the knob here but it wasn't effective until you press the select key. Now it's operational immediately and you can continue transmitting while the speed is variable too. So just listen, you'll hear the dits getting faster as I turn up the speed. Another thing you'll notice is this P here in the display after the frequency. This P is displayed when the, tr the transmitter is in practice mode. So if I go through and turn off practice mode, you'll see the P has now gone. So one of the compromises that were made here, uh, referring to the QCX circuit diagram, was that the Kia paddle inputs are actually shared with the pulse per second and serial data inputs of the GPS. You can see that here. Uh, they're both using the same pins. Now the problem with that is that if you connect the GPS and you're in normal uh, transmission mode the GPS signals will key the transmitter to a permanent continuous key down which can overheat the final transistors particularly if you don't have a dummy load or antenna or you have a severe mismatch. So the GPS should really only be connected during config uh, alignment and configuration or when using the whisper transmitter but many people forgot that or didn't read it in the manual and therefore fried their finals. And so one of the changes in 1.01 .01 actually monitors that serial data input and if it detects serial data on the 
pin rather than normal paddle operation it automatically switches you into practice mode which stops transmission uh, so no further RF output means no damage to final transistors. So now when I connect the GPS I'm just going to plug in the GPS here now at the back and it will start keying but you can see it automatically switched to practice mode because it recognized the serial data coming in. It's still keying the transmitter but it's now switched to practice mode so it's not actually outputting any RF power and it's uh, protecting the finals from being on continuous key down. Now if I disconnect the transmitter and I just go into the menu and, and come out again you can see the P has disappeared so it's not a permanent switch to power to, to practice mode it's just a temporary switch to prevent you from damaging the finals. Another problem that people had had is when using a straight key um, with a mono plug on it and the ring connection shorts against the ground which causes the transmitter to key continuously so I've now added a new option here in the in the keyer menu so that you can select when in straight key mode whether to use the tip or the ring or both the tip and the ring I also found a bug with the CW decoder so the decoder is quite complex because it has to keep track of both the amplitude variations as the signal fades in and out and also it has to try to track the speed of the sending station to make sure that uh, it's always decoding with the correct timing and there was a bug in that speed tracking which meant that it always tracked with a built-in bias towards faster and faster morse so in the end the decoder thought that it was decoding much faster morse than it was really being sent and that messed up the timing which reduced the ability to do decoding accurately so that results in some improvement to CW decoding There was also the uh, S meter, now the S meter is not particularly accurate or useful but uh, it's useful for some things perhaps and there was a bug with the S meter just disappearing spontaneously sometimes when you went into the menu and came out again um, so that's now been corrected, the S meter is now there all the time there was also a bug where on some occasions these characters to the right of the tuning cursor here could be corrupt between the tuning cursor and the start of the S meter were able to be corrupted with some of the text from the CW decoder so I managed to fix that bug as well as the disappearing S meter bug another thing that you'll notice is that the band menu 3.9 at the end of the VFO menu has now been removed and that's because that's no longer necessary you load the band at first power up and after that you don't need to select again all the band setting does is adjust these frequencies in the alignment menu and the preset frequencies what the preset frequencies default to um, to values in the band so some people who wanted to experiment with multi-band QCX kits and were finding that when changing from one band to another it was necessary to do a factory reset if that's not done then the SI53531 a was not configured properly that's now been corrected so that the SI53531 a configuration is done dynamically on the fly according to the frequency being transmitted and so as soon as you select a different operating frequency here it could be in a completely different band as soon as you select that the SI5351A will automatically use that 
uh, correct configuration and you won't need to do a factory reset. So this makes it much easier for people to uh, generate a multi-band QCX if they want to. We also have a new feature where you can customize the startup screen. So you'll see here in the other menu, now the factory reset, which used to be on menu 7.8, has moved to 7.9. And instead at 7.8, you've got this custom splash screen. Now if I switch that on, what that does is any message which is stored in messages 11 and 12, um, so here are the messages menu, the messages which are in menus 11 and 12, if they're present, are used as the splash screen at first power up. If they're not present, as you see here, message 11, which will be the top row at power up, has not been set, then it will use the default uh, startup screen. If they are present, such as this, this will be shown on the bottom row. So I can demonstrate that if I just switch this off. Now when I switch it on, you'll see here it's got my customised splash at the bottom row of the screen and the top row of the screen was as normal. Show you that one more time. So it's nice if you just want to personalise your QCX rather than use the default startup screen. Those two memories, 11 and 12, would therefore no longer be used for CW transmissions because they now contain your startup message. Um, most people don't use all 12 message memories anyway. Of course you could transmit it still, but uh, it may not be something useful for transmission. There were some other minor improvements as well. So one of these is the break character, which is da di 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 da, which is traditionally written as an equals character, and I was using a vertical bar, so that's now been changed to equals. There's also a problem with whisper, where if you happened to be using your QCX in a car, for example, and you were sending whisper and you moved to a different grid square, it wouldn't actually update the whisper message until one cycle later than it had retrieved the new position from the GPS. So that's now been corrected as well, very minor. And finally, there's also now a change where to co you can copy the contents of VFO A over into VFO B by using the correct sequence of presses of the right button here. So you've given it a long press followed by a short press within one second. You will actually copy VFO onto VFO B. And if you use a long press followed by two short presses, you will copy VFO B onto VFO A. If you have an AVR programmer and software such as AVR Studio or AVR Dudes, you can look in the file section of the group and you will find there the QCX firmware files and or links to the firmware files and you'll be able to update the firmware yourself. Alternatively, if you want to purchase a program chip, you can find it in the QRP Labs shop.